Well, I'm starting to cut some of this 2x2 two two tubing. I already finished the first one that's over there on the bench. Um, I'm going to try and hopefully set this camera up to where I can kind of demonstrate how this cuts with this portable bandsaw that I have. Um, <clears throat> I'm using a 14 tooth per inch blade on it. It seems to work quite well. If you get too aggressive, it wants to cut too fast, and that's where you start having troubles with what to cut on a taper. This seems to um, cut aggressive enough that you're not staying there for 10 minutes on one cut, but at the same time, it's not going through so fast that it's making a big taper on it. All the other cuts I've made have actually been pretty close, which is good for me because I'm just personally, I seems like I always cut everything on an angle. I, I can't even draw a straight line. It's just, <laughs> it's just, um, I guess a quirk of myself so I'm going to attempt to see if I can't get this in the camera a little bit and give you an idea of how I'm cutting it enough I suppose by the time it's all said and done all you're going to see is probably my big fat belly but I'm going to try it turned out I'll have to review the video but um, as you can see it cut, cuts it quite square um, I'll finish cutting the rest of this up and no sense in boring you by watching that I just thought I'd demonstrate how I do it I don't uh, push down on the saw at all I let the weight of the saw make the cut when you start pushing down trying to get into too much of a hurry that's when you also start to make a taper and usually once I get to the bottom part of the cut, I tilt it back slightly. So instead of it cutting across straight across the bottom, it cuts at a bit of an angle across the bottom. Seems to make it a little bit nicer that way. I don't do that on the top, mainly because I'm trying to get that cut straight, um, straight down as well as I can. And I find I personally tend to taper myself if I try to angle that back some. But anyways, that's how I do it, and I guess at one of the other steps I'll record what I do there. Well, I've got this set up in the uh, chop saw. Um, you can see there my little cut line. I have that set to where it goes to about the center of the blade. And also, I don't know if you can see it here or not, but I've got a little witness line on here. I'll keep this 45 degree setting and I'll bring each piece to that exact same witness line. So theoretically they should all have the same depth of cut. Now if you look at this, I'm probably a little bit on the shallow side on this. 
I kind of did that on purpose. If I need to grind a little bit of that down, I'll do it. But I'd rather do that than have a huge gap when I put these two together, or all four of them together. So I'm going to put this thing on the tripod from a distance, and I'll try and cut that piece. I'm going to have a face shield on and some gloves when I do that. I have that outside because it throws hot sparks everywhere and well, I've got about 15 gallons of gasoline inside the garage. I don't need a flaming inferno just because I'm building a workbench. So <laughs> I'll get my face shield on and we'll try and cut this thing. quarter inch wall pipes about as thick as you want to cut with this cutoff saw but you can see it's not really a perfect cut but I should be able to dress that with the grinder to make them fit up pretty well one problem I run into with this chop saw is it heats the steel up so much when you have something like this A500 with a little bit of carbon in it it is slightly hardenable you can't make it real hard but it's hard enough that, I don't know if you notice, as I got about three quarters of the way through that, it started to struggle because the heat was actually making that square tubing hard, and it was tougher and tougher to cut it when that happened. But I just thought I'd demonstrate that portion of the job, and I've got quite a bit more cutting to do, so I better get at it. Well, it's quite a while later. As you can see, I got these angles all cut up and as you can see every one of them is pretty much identical so that's good I'd have decent fitment to this as long as they came out exactly 45 degrees now comes the tough part one of the reasons I'm building this is I've got no real good solid bench to build anything on so I'm gonna have to set them up with those saw horses tack them together and then get some of the oil and gasoline and stuff out of here and then weld them together so that's going to take me quite a while so we'll see what happens well I've got this all squared up here all four corners are square um, the fitment's not real close but it's not bad could have been a lot better but that's certainly usable and actually as thick as this material is I'd like to have a slight gap in here my MIG welder really isn't powerful enough to do uh, quarter inch steel. So 
Measuring on the outside dimensions were about 48 and 8 by 36 and 8, which is perfect. That'll give me a slight lip to uh, weld that plate onto. So I'm going to try and tack weld this thing together. We'll see what happens. So far, so good though. Well, I've welded the tack weld the back side. Now I'm going to fully weld the top side all the way around. Um, I got all the lights out of the drive except for one so that my welder has enough power to work. But hopefully, you can kind of get an idea of what's going on here. Hit the limits of the duty cycle of that welder, so I'm going to have to let this cool off for a while. That last weld joint was terrible. Um, I don't know if you can hear it kind of make a funny noise, and it just wouldn't weld after that. That was the over temp dropping the power back. So I'm going to weld the rest of this up, and you get, kind of get the idea. Well, this is pretty much as far as I'm going to go today on this. Um, I got three of the four legs tacked on there. They're level and at pretty close to the same height. Um, got all the corners welded in. I didn't weld the inside corner though to leave room for the, for the uh, legs. I just have each one of those tacked in in several places so they can't move. And then, of course, the fourth leg that's the two pieces that were left over. I have to weld them together and then cut an inch and a sixteenth off. I'll do that tomorrow. It's getting pretty late now, but overall we're moving along pretty good on this workbench. Um, definitely unless something happens, I'm busy tomorrow. It's something else. We ought to have her pretty much done. Okay, that's all.